Today we're going to talk about graphing combined transformations. Now we've already talked about combining transformations um, from the equation and just writing out the steps, but now we're going to actually look at graphing. So just as a reminder, when you're combining your transformations, we have our general equation. So g of x is the transformed equation and f of x would be the parent graph. So you always want to, again, first graph the parent function f of x. Then, you remember, you always do your horizontal movements first, so change in x, and then you do your vertical changes, your change in y. Remember, just like when you're plotting a point on a graph, how do you plot the point? You always plot x, comma, y, so you go over left or right x, and then up or down y, so it's the same idea. So we said, remember, for the order that we're doing, b, h, a, k, and we're going to follow these steps that we have right here. So if b is less than zero, reflect across the y-axis, and then you're going to stretch or compress the graph, um, and then shift the graph horizontally left or right. So for the first part, if you switch around um, one or two, it doesn't really matter if you stretch or compress it and then reflect it, but I always like to do it in the same order, so you're going to see me do it reflections, then stretch, compress, and then left or right, and then again, reflection over the x-axis, stretch, compress vertically, and then up or down. So over here, we have our general equations. Um, I added the trigonometric one down there since um, that was not in the list, but we already have covered sine and cosine graphs, so um, you might want to add that as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem. So the first problem says, state the parent function and the transformations made to the parent graph. Then we're going to graph the parent function and each step of the transformations made to the parent graph. And remember, these are all non-calculator problems. So for this, the first thing we need to identify is what the parent graph is. So I see the absolute value bars in the equation, which tells me this is going to be an absolute value equation. So the parent equation is y equals the absolute value of x. And the name of that, of course, we said was absolute value. So for this, that is the first thing I'm going to do is graph my parent graph. So y equals absolute value of x. We know the absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of 1 is 1. 2 is 2. 3 is 3, etc. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, etc. And then, of course, anything that's a straight line, you want to make sure you use a ruler um, to graph. So for my straight line, we get our absolute value graph. Now that I have my parent graph, I need to start looking at the transformation. So remember that for this function, the general equation is y equals a times the absolute value of b parentheses x minus h, close the parentheses in the absolute value bars, plus k. So this tells us that the a is the number being multiplied on the outside, b would be the number being multiplied in front of the x, so we don't have one, which means it's just one. This is your h, and this is your k. So I'm just going to write all these out. So b, I'm going to write it in order, is equal to 1. h is equal to 1, because remember it's always opposite. a is equal to negative 1 half, and k equals negative 4. So now I can go ahead and start to look at the graph, and I suggest doing this in different colors. So we're going to start off with our b value. If b is 1, that doesn't do anything to our graph, remember. And if you need to look at your graphic organizer um, for those, so remember with b is not less than 0, so it doesn't reflect. And the absolute value of 1 is 1, which is not greater than 1, and it's not in between 0 and 1. So again, that doesn't do a transformation. So that means we're just going to skip the b and go to the next one, which is h equals 1. So when h equals 1, we know that it's going to be a transformation of right 1. So on my graph, I'm just going to move every point right 1. So 
that means my line is just going to move right one. So the vertex would be here now at over one up zero. So that moved every point right one. And same here. So now I have my graph moved right one. So then the next transformation, so that was the B, or the H, sorry, the A is negative one half. So remember, when the A is negative one half, that means we have two different transformations and you need to graph them each separately. So remember, we said if A is less than zero, it reflects over the X axis. And let me make this larger. All right. So we know that we have a reflection over the X axis and gaps of value of negative one half is one half, which is in between zero and one, which is a vertical compression. So on my graph, I'm going to do two different transformations. And remember, I like to follow the order. So I'm going to do the reflection first and then the stretching compressing. So I'm going to do this reflection in green. So A equals negative one half, which means we are reflecting across the x-axis. And remember that vertical movements always change your y. So what makes sense you're reflecting across the x-axis because that would change your y values. So we go off our graph in blue because you're always using the previous step to do the transformations. So let's go ahead and now graph the reflection. So for the reflection, we're going off the graph in blue. So you just count how far away you are from the x-axis. So here this point is on the x-axis that stays there. We have the point 1, 1, or sorry, 2, 1, so that becomes 2, negative 1. And the point 3, 2 becomes 3, negative 2. And the same thing on this side, so then all we would have to do is connect the points. So notice that my x values stayed the same, I'm just changing my y values on my graph. Let's get my ruler again. That gives me my reflection across the x-axis. So now that I have that, I'm still not done with my a because I have to do the one-half now. Because remember, the absolute value of negative one-half is one-half, which is in between zero and one, which we said was a vertical compression by one-half. So again, you're changing your y values. So when you do this, your x values stay where they are, just move the y. So here we have um, a y value of 0. So 0 times a half is 0. Here, the next point at 2, negative 1. So we have a y value of negative 1. So negative 1 times a half is negative a half. So that would be right there. Notice the x value didn't move, just the y value did. So then we have the point 3, negative 2. So negative 2 divided by a half, or times 1 half, would be negative 1. So that would be this point here. So I'm going to pick the next y value that's easily divisible by 2, which is 4. So um, my line's a little off. Let me fix that. All right, so I fixed my line. It was off slightly. So here we have a y value of 4. So 4 times a half, or 4 divided by 2, would give me negative 2, and I should say negative because it's on the negative value region. Oops. We have negative 2. So again, we moved this point to up here. And so we could keep on doing that on the other side as well. So this becomes negative 1. And then we have a y value right here of negative 4. So negative 4 times a half or divided by 2 is negative 2. And we can also do negative 6. So negative 6 for a y value would be here. So negative 6 times a half or divided by 2 would be negative 3. Same thing on this side. And you can actually see for this one, the slope ends up being down 1, right 1, 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, which makes sense since these are straight lines, and we can go ahead and graph.
All right, and then we have one more transformation, which is our k value. So for our k value, we are going to move our graph down uh, 4, because k equals negative 4, so down 4, and this was the h equals 1. And if you want to write no transformations for the b, that's fine, if just to get in the habit of doing that. So now if I just move all those points down four, so I'll start with the vertex, I'm going to move that down one, two, three, four. Move this point down one, two, three, four. And same thing on the other side. I'm just going to count down four for each point. And again, remember we're going off the purple graph. And so now I can take my ruler and graph. And now we have our final transformed graph, which again is this last one that we just did. So um, this is our final graph. So when you're graphing these, like I said, so state the parent graph and what its name is, write out your variables for your B, H, A, and K, and then write the transformations and graph each step. And so again, remember that the vertical movements, all of these values down here, those change the Y values, and this one, which was horizontal, change your X. So remember, you always wanna follow those order. All right, so let's look at the second example. So for the second example, we can go ahead and again, we first want to figure out what the parent graph is. So I see a square root in this. That means that the parent graph is going to be y equals the square root of x. And of course, that's the square root function. And for this, notice that um, here, our b value is not in the factored form, so if b value is not in factored form, you must factor it out first. So make that your first step. So the first thing I need to do is factor out that b value. So we have g of x is equal to 3 times the square root, and my b value is negative 2. So remember, when you're factoring something out, it really means you're just dividing it out of each term and putting it in front. So if I divide out negative 2, that means this is just x, and 8 divided by negative 2 would give me minus 4, and you can always check your work. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. And then we have the minus 6 on the outside. So if you don't factor out that negative 2 first, then you're going to get your left or right transformation incorrect. So always make sure to do that. Now let's go ahead and state what each of our variables are. So for this, we have our a, b, h, and k. So we can look at each one separately. So b, in this case, is equal to negative 2. So remember, since it's negative 2, that means we have two different transformations we are going to look at. So if you look here, b is less than 0. So again, we're going to reflect it across the y-axis. And the absolute value of negative 2 is bigger than 1, so it's going to be a horizontal compression by the absolute value of 1 over b. So again, we have two different transformations, and we're going to have to graph each step separately. So the first one I always like to graph is the reflection. So this one reflects across the y-axis. And so before we do that, we first need to graph our parent graph, which is the square root of x. So the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. 
the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So you should know what your square root graph looks like. So that gives me my parent graph. And now we're going to do a reflection across the y-axis. So um, remember that horizontal changes your x. So this stays here. Then notice that here we have an x value of 1, which is 1 away from the y-axis. So now it's going to be one away on the other side of the y-axis, so negative one, one. The point four, two becomes negative four and two. And the point nine, three becomes negative nine, three. So notice that our y value stayed the same, but our x values changed to reflect across the y-axis. So now that I have my reflection across the y-axis, the next step is to do the horizontal compression by one half because of the two. So horizontal compression by the absolute value of one over b, which is one half. So again, remember these change your x values. So your y value is going to stay the same. We're just going to change our x by dividing it by two. So this as an x value is zero, so that's going to stay there. This um, x value right here is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2 becomes negative 2. And here we have a y value of um, negative 9. So of course, um, negative 9 divided by 2 would be 4.5. Or negative 4.5, sorry, to be here. And if we were to have another point on our graph, it would be negative 16 and 4. So negative 16 and 4. So if you divide negative 16 by the 2, that means the new point would be negative 8 and 4. So I'm going to plot that one as well so we have another point. So negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that point would actually be right there. It just gives us another value. And if you wanted to do the negative 1, negative 1 times a half is negative half, which is fine. Just usually I try to pick nice values that are easily divisible by whatever the number is we're looking at. So that is the horizontal compression by an x, by a half. So again, notice we changed our x values. So the y values did not change. We just again changed the x. So now that b is done, we do our h. So in this case, h is equal to 4, because remember it's opposite, so that moves right 4. If it was plus 4, it would move left, but since it's minus 4, it moves right 4. So now we just move every point right, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then draw our graph. So that's right 4. Then we have our a value, which is 3. So a equals 3. So remember, if a is 3, that's going to be a vertical stretch by 3. And again, if you need to use your graphic organizer to help, a is not less than 0, but the absolute value of A is bigger than 1, so vertical stretch by that value. So that means, remember, vertical changes Y. So our Y values, we're going to multiply by 3. So here we have a Y value of 0 at the start, so 0 times 3 stays 0. This Y value right here is a Y value of 2, so 2 times 3 is 6, so that moves up to there. Then I'm going to use this y value over here. So this y value here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 3 would be 12. So it would be way up here. So I did um, decide to do the point in between two to have another point. So I used uh, this point that we had here, which was. Um, negative half up one two three so three times three is nine so negative half nine so then our graph will go like this and we're almost done we have one step left so our k value is negative six which moves our graph down 
six. I'm going to count down six from each point. And so that is our transform graph. And of course, one other thing you can do to check your work after you're all finished, we know it's no calculator for these graphs, but you could plug it into your y equals and just double check your points that way when you have um, you know, a function that you can plug into your calculator. So it's good to just check your final graph to make sure your points are correct. For this last problem, I would probably pause the video and see if you can do it on your own when you're done on check your work. Um, so example three, the parent graph P of X is shown on the graph below. Describe the transformations made to P of X in words, then graph each transformation on the graph using a different color. So for this, um, first things first, Notice that my B value is not in factored form. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor that out. So G of X equals negative two. P is just the variable. P of X is the parent graph. Because it's a piecewise function. So, um, and Normally we have like an actual function there, but we're using P for the parent graph. So we're just doing the transformations made to the parent. So factor out that B value, which is two, and that becomes X plus five. So remember when you're factoring out, you're dividing out the value. So that should be your first step. So this is my A value. This is my B value. This is my H and this is my K. So for this, the first step we always do is graph the parent graph. So the um, parent graph is given, which is P of X. And it's already graphed, so we don't have to do anything for that step. So the next one is my B value equals 2. So when B is 2, that is a horizontal compression by one half and remember that means you're changing your x values on your graph so we have an x value here of negative three so negative three times a half or divided by two gives me negative 1.5 so that value moved there notice the y value stays the same we just move the x value so if we do this point right here um, this is negative 2 for an x value, so negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so that point moves there. And here we have negative 1 times a half would be a half, so that point moves there. This point right here is at um, 1, so that's going to move to a half. Here we have a x value of 2, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that is going to move the point here to 1. And then I'm going to look for other nice values that are divisible by 2. So I'm going to use this one right here. So this is a, a x, sorry, I said y, I meant x value. So this is an x value of 4. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's going to move that point to there. And then the next point we have that's easily divisible would be 6 for an x value. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that point moved over here and if we did um, six which is right here that goes to um sorry that's seven so eight which is right here so eight goes to negative or to um four there we go so again notice that i changed my x values, my y values stayed the same. So this was a horizontal compression by half. So notice that it's compressed our graph in. And let's go ahead and use our ruler to connect our points so we can get a better idea of our new graph. So that 
would be your new graph. And of course, notice that I used a ruler to connect the points since these are straight lines. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these arrows. So the next step that we want to do is, of course, the H. And so for this H, notice it's plus 5. So that means our H is negative 5. Because remember, it's always X minus in the equation. So to get that plus, we have to have X minus negative 5. So that moves it left 5. So on my graph, I'm just going to actually count left 5. And then, of course, I'm going to use my ruler to connect those points. Oops, I didn't want an arrow. And that's then next transformation. So after that, we have our a value. So my a value equals negative 2. So remember, that's two different transformations. a is less than 0, so we're going to reflect across the x-axis. And after that, we're going to do a horizontal, or sorry, vertical stretch by 2. So we'll do that after we reflect. So now I'm going to reflect across the x-axis. So if I'm on the x-axis, that point stays there. Then I'm two away here, so that goes two away. Same thing here. And that one is four away. This one's on. This point's two away. And this one's two away on that side. And then again, take your ruler to connect those points. And now we have our reflection across the x-axis. So notice the shape stays the same. We're just reflected it. And now we have to do the vertical stretch by Two. So remember that changes your y values when you're doing vertical movements. So that means that my x values are going to stay the same and my y is going to change. So here if I have a y value of 0, 0 times 2 stays 0. The next y value that I have is this point right here. So that's a y value of negative 2. So negative 2 times 2 gives me negative 4. So that point moved from there to there. And same thing with this point. It's going to move here. Then we have um, a y value at the top, so that is negative 4. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So that point moves here. And then this point is going to move here. This one stays. And then here we have a y value positive 2 times 2 is 4. So that point moved there. So if I use my ruler to connect these points, the vertical stretch by 2, notice that our x values didn't move, just the y values did. So that would give us our new graph. And our last value that we have is k. So k equals 6. So the last step would be to move my graph up six units. So you're just going to count up six for each one. And so this orange graph, which I highlighted in yellow so you could see it better, that is our final transformed graph. And that's it for our transformations. So again, remember to graph the parent graph. If that B value is not factored out, factor it out. Write out each of your variables and then follow the order of transformations B, H, A, and then K. And then make sure to graph each step. And like I said, if it is a straight line, use a ruler. Um, and I would use different colors for each of the different steps as well.